Okay. Hi. Um, my name is Chuka Chiamalu, and I did my um, final project on the lack of affordable housing in New Mexico. Um, so first off, what is affordable housing? And the official, the official definition used by the government is a house that a family can obtain for 30% or less of their income. And the house also has to cost less than 24% of the AMI or the area median income. Um, there's a lot wrong with this definition, like how the AMI can actually like raise the cost of housing in high income areas, which means people from like lower income or people that don't make as much as the AMI are considered low income when they actually aren't. And also houses are houses further from like job centers and city hubs and like places where a lot of people come um, are usually cheaper. And so this definition doesn't include like things like transportation costs or stuff like that. So yeah, that's the problem with that definition. Um, why is affordable housing an issue, especially in New Mexico? Um, finding and creating affordable housing is difficult because of a multitude of factors, whether that be, you know, economic or lack of social push, whatever it is, there's a big issue. Um, this creates a problem for people with low incomes who now can't find a place to live. Um, they're left stranded, usually on the streets, without a home. Um... And it's an even bigger issue in New Mexico because, as we all know, New Mexico is not the wealthiest state. And so all these factors play into the fact that low-income people have find, a, find it really hard to find housing. Um, how the pandemic made the affordable housing issue worse. So the pandemic didn't really help um, in terms of affordable housing. Um, we already had issues housing people, as I said before, but because of the global virus, this caused like supply chain issues, like with things like lumber, which is usually used to build houses. And so with the lack of those materials um, and supplies, we had even less houses to put people in and the cost of rent went up. So yeah, um, all these COVID showed us that we were highly unprepared for um, like a surprise, just a surprise in general, and how that affected people in negative ways. Um, so where did our tax money go instead of affordable housing or things like that? So our tax money, essentially, a lot of it goes to the military. So in 2021, taxpayers in Bernalillo County paid around $1 billion to the military, which is insane. Um, that money, alone could have been used to pay for around 200,000 public housing units, which is just crazy when you put it into perspective. That's $1 billion that me and you paid to the government for, I don't know, more fighter jets. I don't, I don't know. Um, it's just kind of crazy. Um, overspending is nothing new. We all know that. Uh, the, the U.S., last year we spent over $700 billion altogether on the military. Absurd. Crazy. I don't know. Um, I don't know why we'd even need that much more oil, I guess. I really don't know. Um, if we reprioritize, reprioritize this money, we can spend it on things like housing. Making our crisis almost, I wouldn't say completely solved, but a lot of the problems we have would not be problems anymore. Um, how does affordable housing affect students? So as we all know, housing, especially on campus, is not cheap. Um, you're looking to pay thousands a semester wherever you go to college. It, doesn't, it does not matter where you go. Um, to make it even worse, sometimes the conditions are just really bad and not worth the amount of money you're putting into them. So like we could look at Howard University, which like last year, it was blowing up that um, their dorms where people were spending thousands just on housing alone, not even including tuition or student fees or anything like that. They're spending thousands to find mold and rodents in their in their dorm rooms. And you can see that in the picture. Um, and they were tenting outside because they couldn't live inside of the dorms that they're paying for, which is just crazy. So it's like, how can, how can we not, 
how can we be paying thousands of dollars for such terrible conditions? It just doesn't make sense. Um, and I interviewed a friend who lives um, on campus. His name was Caleb Bradley. Um, he's a sophomore. He's the same major as me, environmental design. And um, he just finished an internship with the Village of Las Lunas. Um, and so I just asked him, like, how much do you pay per semester, which he said around 1500 per semester. Um, and how are the living conditions? And he said they're not too bad, but they do have the occasional electric electrical issues like with the ac and stuff like that and roaches but nothing too terrible um and then i asked him about his internship at las lunas and how they did work in affordable housing and how effective that was and he said um it was tricky because a lot of the actions they have to take are political and you have to see like how long a building could stay affordable for people and if you want to make certain parts of it commercial to make more money make more income um, and he said, it's hard to tell if our work is effective yet because of, because a lot of these negotiations have to be hashed out. And that was a part I didn't really think of was how like political affordable housing is and how like some people don't really see it as an issue. And I just didn't think about that. So I think I'm glad that I interviewed him and asked him those questions and he opened my eyes about that. Um, places that try to do, um, try to help. So places like community centers and homeless shelters do the most that they can with providing resources to homeless people or displaced people or providing a place to stay like during the day for people who work all day and have to leave their kids somewhere, stuff like that. And of course, these places can only do so much without the full backing of government resources. So a lot of these homeless shelters and community centers are underfunded severely, like they almost always never have money. And so like, especially during the pandemic, we saw that how crowded these places can get and how like how these conditions foster not so good environments, especially during a, a pandemic where there's a global virus and people are supposed to be six feet away, but they're all packed into a homeless center. And so that just helps spread the virus even further. And so, yeah. Um, they try to help and they try to do their best, but, and not because of their, but it's not enough. And it's, it just sucks to see that because not everyone can afford a house and people try to go to places where they can at least find shelter. That's one of the basic human needs is shelter. So they go to a place to try to find shelter and they, and the shelter they find is not livable. Um, and yeah. Uh, some these are some examples or an example of a success, a successful affordable housing. So this is these are the Tetris apartments in Slovenia. Um, they're made of recyclable materials and have lots of open space for tenants. And so, like something interesting is that that um, that first picture is so the that's the picture, and then on the street in front of that is actually a highway. But you can't really hear that because of the way they set it up. You can't see the highway like in a line of sight or you can't hear it. Um, the wind or everything is facing like 30 degrees, I think, up. So you can't really see the highway, which is very interesting. And it shows the amount of effort someone put in or people put into these architects put into like public housing and how they try to make it livable and not just like livable, but also enjoyable for the tenants. And um, they're all made of recyclable materials, like 70% of uh, the building is recyclable, which is insane. Um, they were sold to the Slovenia Housing Fund, which already manages over 3,000 affordable houses for the needy. Um, so yeah, these are like super cheap and very occupiable for people who need a home. Um, this is something New Mexico is starting to adopt with the New Mexico Trust Fund. But I think it's important that we look at places like Slovenia um, for a blueprint on how to do this effectively and make it not just livable, but also like enjoyable for people. Something like a source of pride for people who live there. Um, another possible solution I, I saw online was the idea um, of 3D printing our homes. And this is becoming way more common, like since 3D printing is becoming more common um, I have a friend who has a 3D printer in his house, 
So yeah, I, I think it's just becoming a way more common practice and like hobby to 3D print. So I think if we incorporate that into trying to plan out houses and, you know, do these things, I feel like it'd be a, another solution. Um, they already do this for like those science fairs, like to, I don't know how else to describe it, but like those science fairs to Mars or whatever, like where they, they fake going to Mars. They, a lot of people, a lot, I think it's like a requirement that they 3D print their the little domes or whatever and whatever they were going to live in. And so, yeah, I think we can apply that to our houses and make like low, not really like, I guess, yeah, low effort because it would just be a machine, low effort, cost effective houses for people. Um, I have a cousin in Hawaii who's doing this with this church or they're like kind of in the, in the process of planning it out in their church. And so I think it's something that New Mexico can adopt with relative ease and like not too much economic investment. Um, the effort to create change. So effort is being made to create change. Uh, recently, governor the governor just signed in, into legislation the New Mexico Trust Fund, which gives money to construction and maintenance of thousands of affordable houses. Um, I think this is a really great step in the right direction. Uh, I think it, I think it shows that our government actually does care about this issue and that, um, and even though it took them a while that they are starting to tap in, I don't know how else to describe it, like starting to realize that, oh yeah, we have a problem, we have a crisis and we should be working on solving it. Um, so yeah, the passing of bill shows that this is taken, being taken seriously and I think that's important. Shout out the governor. Um, in conclusion, affordable housing is extremely important. It provides one of the most basic needs to people, shelter. Um, New Mexico and the entire U.S., the entire United States has had a housing crisis for years now. Um, it doesn't, I don't know, we've had a housing crisis for years. And there are many solutions that we could implement, but compared to other things, you know, obviously more important, the military obviously more important obviously more important i'm being sarcastic but um things like the military are just taking priority in terms of our money in terms of where our money goes so i think it's i think it's great that we're seeing bills being signed in and new things being added and things like that but we have to wait and see how effective they are how effective they actually are in creating change and creating affordable housing so yeah, um, these are my sources and thank you for watching my presentation.